Hello folks, Rod Machado here. Most every pilot knows what it's like to stall an airplane with the nose pointed above the horizon. However, the most serious stall condition that could affect you occurs with the nose pointed slightly below the horizon. And I'm speaking of those stalls that occur while turning from base to final approach in a descent. Now here's where the nose is pointed below the horizon. If we pull aft on the yoke during a descending turn, the nose does not move only in the vertical direction. Instead, it moves in a diagonal direction while the angle of attack is increasing. If the critical angle of attack is approached in this nose down attitude while turning, it's entirely possible you might not even know you're approaching a stalled condition. Here's an excerpt from my upcoming new e-course titled How to Fly an Airplane that, well, better explains this concept. Stalling with the nose pointed down while turning. At the beginning of this chapter, I said that an airplane can stall at any attitude and any airspeed. And I wasn't fooling around either, mainly because I wasn't wearing my propeller hat at the time. This is a very important point for you to understand. No, about the stall, not the propeller hat. Now that you have a foundation for understanding stalls, you're ready to explore a very common stall spin scenario that can trap the unwary pilot. Let's assume that you're flying at a very slow speed in level flight, meaning that you're using engine power with the wings near their critical angle of attack. It's clear from this description that the nose is pointed above the horizon. Let's make a power off descending turn from base to final approach at the same angle of attack. In this descending situation, you'll find that the airplane's nose is pointed below the horizon. It just happens to be one of those days where you didn't plan your descent perfectly and suddenly find yourself at too low an altitude while flying at this large angle of attack. Your natural, although often fatal, instinct might be to pull aft on the elevator in an attempt to shy away from the ground. This might be a subtle, continuous pull and you might not even be aware that you're doing it. Why is that? Well, listen on. Because the airplane is banked, pulling aft on the elevator control moves the nose at a diagonal to the horizon. There's a horizontal as well as a vertical component to this motion. This is unlike pulling aft on the elevator in straight flight, which moves the nose only vertically. When applying aft elevator pressure in a descending turn, the nose does rise toward the horizon slightly, but it also moves horizontally toward the inside of the turn too. At 45 degrees of bank, the nose moves horizontally as much as it moves vertically with aft elevator pressure. The result is that while you're increasing the angle of attack in a descending turn, you don't see the nose moving vertically as much as you're used to. In previous stall examples, you sense that you are approaching a stall because the nose rose above the horizon to some degree. Here, however, the nose is below the horizon because you're descending and turning. Any increase in elevator back pressure doesn't entirely translate into the vertical movement of the nose because of the banked condition. When observing the airplane's pitch attitude in relation to the horizon, it might not be apparent to you that the wings are approaching their critical angle of attack when applying elevator back pressure in a descending turn. And this is why you want to look at the angle made between the wings cord line and terrain movement in a turn to get a very rough approximation of your angle of attack. Without knowing your angle of attack, it's entirely possible for you to stall with the nose pointed below the horizon you will undoubtedly be surprised by such an event. What further complicates this issue is that the airplane's stalling speed increases in a turn because of the increase in load factor. Again, more on load factor when we cover accelerated stalls shortly. If the airplane stalls in this condition, you might initially be confused because the nose is pointed below the horizon in an attitude that you normally select to recover from the stall. To recover from a stall in a descending turn, you must do what you did before, but now it's a lot more counterintuitive because the nose is already below the horizon and the ground is close. Here is where you want to stay true to your school. 
it's just a stall. Release elevator back pressure and lower the nose, reducing the angle of attack to less than its critical value. Yikes, how unnatural is that? It's like wearing swim fins with a tuxedo, and that combination doesn't even look good on a penguin. The closer you are to the ground, the stronger your tendency is to continue pulling back on the elevator despite the fact that you may be in a stall. There is a phrase for this particular event in Spanish. It's called hasta la vista, baby. And if you'd like me to complicate this equation even further, just imagine what the stall would be like if the airplane was in a skid at the time of the stall. One wing might stall before the other and the airplane would enter a spin. Believe me, this is not what your instructor means when he or she says, let's take the airplane out for a spin. Spinning close to the ground might easily turn your airplane into a lawn dart. And this is why you always want to fly coordinated as well as be hypersensitive to the conditions that precede a stall. Most important, you don't want to fall into the trap of believing that just because the airplane's nose is pointed below the horizon, that it can't stall. Believe me, it can. If you want to pass your IFR knowledge exam or your private pilot knowledge exam, then check out my 50-hour and or 40-hour Instrument Pilot eGround School or Private Pilot eGround School, respectively. Not only will you pass the exam, but you'll learn more about the essentials of IFR or VFR flying that you just won't get in other ground training programs. Why? Well, because I've been instructing for over five decades, have personally written and illustrated seven aviation books, five of which are aviation textbooks, delivered training programs in all 50 states and many European countries, and have won countless awards from the FAA for my aviation training programs. In short, you won't be taught by a private pilot with limited experience and a basic ground instructor rating. Instead, you'll receive quality ground training that makes it easy and fun to learn. So visit rodmachado.com and check out the large selection of aviation educational courses.